today. Enormous, tre tremendous power. He's called the Hulk. Or Hulk. The Incredible Hulk, today at 5.20. Tonight, a new movie thriller, Star Trap. An ex-cop turned writer. Tip the press off to expect fireworks. She's every bit is equal. How much you value your life? I Together, but not always as a team, they have to track down the killer and a bizarre murder mystery in rural England. This is the 20th century. That is the stuff of fiction. Sir John Fortescue, MP. There'll be the devil to pay. What? Star Trap, a scintillating new movie thriller starring Nicky Henson and Francis Tomalty tonight. The news from ITM. Rail unions say will hold talks on Monday to coordinate action. The NUR, ASLEF and the White Collar Union, the TSSA, met on the day ASLEF's overtime ban begins. There's no indication yet that they'll go on to see BR management. The unions will get together here on Monday morning. But ominously for would-be travellers, they'll discuss not only the prospects of an improved pay offer following the tribunal's recommendation, but also coordinating industrial action more effectively. Railman's leader Jimmy Knapp said today that his union's position is unchanged. He's made it clear 8.8% isn't enough. British Rail, who'd offered to meet the unions at their London headquarters today, said they'd be ready any time Monday. But will the unions have a united position? Well, obviously, if the NUR and ASLIF decided that it was not possible to uh, reach a settlement on the basis of uh, the tribunal decision, and that might, might well be their view, uh, and the soundings from our members was that they felt we should accept, uh, then clearly there would be a difference of approach. Labour say the government hopes to capitalise on the dispute. I think the government is trying to. I think the government believes that if it goes on being harsh and unreasonable with the trade unions, then it will be popular. But this country has grown tired of a harsh, unreasonable government which wants to end every dispute by conflict and the destruction of one of the parties. Despite the prospect of talks, the driver's overtime ban will start on Monday and the NUR say the 24-hour strike on Wednesday is going ahead. Sarah Cullen, ITN, King's Cross. A delegation from Hong Kong is travelling to Beijing tomorrow to seek reassurances about the colony's future from 1997. There is growing anxiety in Hong Kong about Chinese intentions when sovereignty is handed over. The Xinhua News Agency is effectively the Chinese embassy in Hong Kong and wreaths for the Beijing dead still remain outside. So China knows the present mood here, that it's effectively lost the hearts of the Hong Kong people. Huge demonstrations have taken place. And today, China told local delegates of the National People's Congress, trust us, and promised these pro-democracy marchers would not be persecuted in 1997. It's so difficult to cultivate confidence, and it takes, it takes a long time to do so. But to wipe it out, all it took was that early morning on the 4th of June in Tiananmen Square. Now, I think they, they have to come up with something much more concrete than words. So people here want gestures and the agenda in Beijing is likely to include two requests. That the People's Liberation Army should not be stationed in Hong Kong and that the United Nations should be involved in the territory's future. Simon Cole, ITN, in Hong Kong. A Soviet newspaper has revealed that 340 soccer fans were killed at a match in Moscow nearly seven years ago, making it the world's worst soccer disaster. A Moscow Spartak goal near the end of a UEFA Cup game against Harlem of Holland brought departing spectators rushing back up the same exit where police were forcing fans down. The paper says the authorities staged a cover-up. Rugby and the British Lions have been celebrating their 19 points to 12 win over Australia in the second test at Brisbane. But today's match was marred by outbreaks of fighting, the first flare-up coming as early as the first scrum. Two tries in the last five minutes clinched victory. Scott Hastings scored the first, and then Jeremy Guscott went over to seal the win on his Lions debut. Tennis, Boris Becker and Ivan Lendl are fighting it out at Wimbledon for a place in tomorrow's final. Their level on sets at two all. Becker is the bookie's favourite for the title, twice a Wimbledon champion and still only 21. He has the power and the pedigree.
The German hadn't dropped a set in the tournament before today and he opened against Lendl by taking the first set with all his aggression pumping. But Lendl, the world number one, is a man obsessed with winning Wimbledon. It's something he's never done before and this, he believes, will be his year. He broke to win the second set and then left Boris in despair as he also swept the third. But the German hit back to win the fourth set to set up a thrilling climax. Mark Austin, ITN Sport, Wimbledon. That's it. We're back at 10 to 9. Good afternoon. Good evening. Well, the best weather today was up in Scotland and in Ireland, too. You can see this from the cloud breaks on the satellite picture behind me. But it was a different story in England and Wales. Quite a lot of rain around. And this afternoon, a belt of thunderstorms stretched right from Norwich down into the London area with flooding over in Colchester. Now, those showers will die out during the course of tonight, but they will be with us for this evening. A different story once again up in Scotland and northern England. Quite a dry and bright finish to the day, too. Now, tomorrow, that brightness is slowly extending its influence from the north down into northern England. England. But I'm afraid it is going to be quite a time down in most of England, particularly in the south, before that weather starts to brighten up. And there'll also be some showers over in the extreme southeast. And by the end of the day, heavier cloud and showers getting into western Scotland. Those temperatures tomorrow, similar to today's, a little cooler, particularly once again down the eastern side of the country. Good evening. More than a million people took to the streets along the Thames this afternoon to see the capital's sailing event of the decade. 152 of the world's finest tall ships sailed out of the Pool of London and downriver to the start of the Cutty Sark Tall Ships Race. Juliet Alexander was there. The morning started with a happy hour. In nautical terms, that means getting each vessel scrubbed, swabbed and shipshaped. Londoners, including the Princess Royal, came to wave off the 151 vessels representing 16 countries. Sadly, it's probably the last time the tall ships will visit the capital because of a proposed new bridge at Dartford. The race looks like being a battle of the sexes between two local crews. The all-female Sir Winston Churchill and the all-male Malcolm Miller. Malcolm Miller! We won last year and we're going to repeat it this year. The Thames was awash with tall ships as a flotilla of the magnificent vessels departed in a parade of sails from Tower Bridge, heading out to sea. It's the first time for 14 years that the race, which first set sail in 1956, has started off in London. Tomorrow the race will be on as the vessels set sail from the Thames estuary to Hamburg. Well, Anna Maria, the tall ships in full sail are still arriving here at Greenwich. Earlier, people had to scatter for cover as the, as the heavens opened, but they still returned, anxious not to miss this historic last visit of the tall ships to London. Anna Maria, the trip to, to Hamburg is expected to take about three days. And from here, a noisy Greenwich, back to you. Firemen cut two men from the wreckage of their glider after it crashed in a field near Dover. Stephen Fish from Tunbridge in Kent suffered head injuries. Gliding instructor John Reeves from Aldington near Ashford hurt his legs. Both received hospital treatment. Police say a fire which badly damaged New Barnet railway station overnight was suspicious. Fire investigation officers are still trying to find the cause of the blaze, which destroyed the ticket office and footbridge. Trains are not stopping at New Barnet because of the fire. Parents and primary school children marched through Beckenham today in the latest protest against a council decision to move their school just yards from a council dump. We have a report now from Nigel Swettenham. Protesters from Churchfield's primary school are furious at Bromley Council for selling their old school site to developers and moving 300 children to new buildings just 60 yards from a dump which is handling 200 tonnes of rubbish a day. They've been campaigning for four years to have the dump closed down. Pure common sense tells me that if you've got a dump that close, which is about the length of an average garden, there is no way that you can prevent dust and pollution being blown over into the school playground. The local Tory ward councillor is rebelling against the council and supporting the parents. 
but in Bromley, which is one of the richest boroughs and, and uh, is supposed to be a civilised environment with the logo green and clean, it is just frankly beyond belief and we will continue the pressure until the council uh, makes sense. Some parents are already sending their children to other schools. The council says it made careful studies and it believes the school to be perfectly safe. Nigel Swetnam, LWT News. The largest Japanese festival ever held outside Japan took place today in Battersea. More than 30,000 visitors went along to get a taste of the Orient. Among them was Jerry Arnfield. The Japanese are celebrating the Matsuri Festival at home throughout the summer with traditional entertainment, ceremonies and food. London's version has been coming to Battersea Park for five years and today the greatest source of intrigue still comes on a plate. Uh, it's, called, yeah, it's, called. it's Chinese cabbage, noodles, a very special sauce. This one, the cuttlefish. Grill with soy sauce, with ginger. This is a Japanese dish called beef skiaki. Is it uh, good? Yeah, it's nice. I don't know quite what's in it. It's beef and vegetables and then soy sauce. Visitors finding the digestion a little tough could always try the more gentle art of origami, where a little inside knowledge always helps. The organisers hope the whole festival is a learning experience. For the ordinary public, the British public, to try to introduce them to the fact that the, the Japanese are normal human beings who enjoy themselves. And that enjoyment should spread a little warmth tonight among the visitors, with the ceremonial cracking of a barrel of sake. Jerry Armfield, LWT News. Countryside campaigner David Bellamy made news in Carshalton today. He was there supporting the region's first ecology centre run by a local authority. The centre is Sutton Council's way of spreading the green message to its ratepayers. Police at Edgware made a mass arrest last night and locked up eight Cub Scouts, but Baden-Powell isn't turning in his grave. The Cubs were just taking part in a challenge to sleep in unusual places. The tall ships also brought traffic chaos to the capital. Both road and rail traffic ground to a halt as nearly a million sightseers headed for the riverbanks. Police say it'll get worse this evening as fans arrive for a rock concert at the Docklands area. The London Youth Games got underway at Crystal Palace today and one of the people helping in the push for medals is anything but a youth. Vic White is a 74-year-old veteran and he's the coach to one of the capital's brightest sporting prospects. A report from Neil Hughes. Although he was born in the early years of the First World War, Vic White still manages to compete in international pentathlon events and his home in Southall is filled with mementos of his sporting achievements. Not only that, but he still teaches swimming classes, trains in rifle shooting, rides, and takes part in 250 miles sponsored bike rides. Now he's investing half a century of sports know-how in one of Britain's brightest young hopefuls. At 18, Danny Ashley from Hounslow is the junior European triathlon champ and ranked 32nd in the world. And because he's now the uh, under 18 European champion, is to keep on with it and aim for Hawaii, which is the full Ironman competition. And that's, that's his main object. It's a fantastic sport. Where, what other sport you know, can you have little kids and unknowns racing against world champions and Olympic champions and things like that? Now Vic is hoping his protege will lead the Hounslow team to victory in the youth games, a forerunner to international success in the future. Neil Hughes, LWT News. On to the weather now. This evening there'll be thundery showers which will gradually clear to leave a humid misty night with a little drizzle later. Lowest temperatures will be near 15 degrees Celsius, 59 Fahrenheit. That's it till five past nine.